All right, there we go. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good people. Good morning to my YouTube fam, my Instagram fam. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Get my little stuff together over here. How y'all doing today? Amen. Today is the 25th. Good morning. Good morning, fam. <clears throat> Good morning to you. Good day. I pray you're doing well today. Amen. I'm going to get ready for our devotion here. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Kitty. Good morning, sis. How y'all doing this morning? <clears throat> Welcome to the morning manna. Heart to heart conversations with daddy. You know, people used to get offended. I don't know, see if, well, maybe offended. Um, but I remember I was reading a post um, a couple years ago, and um, people were having a problem because we were calling God Daddy. I don't know what that was about, but I thought that was odd. I really don't care, but <laughs> I was like, He is my Daddy. That's who he is to me. Anyway, I hope y'all are well. Y'all good this morning? We're going to go ahead and do today's devotional. And then we're going to jump on in. <clears throat> Let me know what you got going on this morning. Are you at home? Are you working from home? Are you, getting, are you driving? Are you dropping kids off? Are you at work? Where are you right now? Where are you? What you got going on? What you drinking this morning? I'm drinking some some coffee. I found this new mug. I, I love it because it's so accurate of who I am. Because <laughs> she ain't. Not even a little bit. Praise God. So where are you? Are you working? You driving? Dropping the babies off? Are you having a cup of coffee this morning, a cup of tea? What's going on with you this morning? How are you today? I hope y'all doing good. If you're driving the babies to school, hey babies, have an amazing day today. All right, I needed to get me a couple, couple sips of that. <clears throat> this 4 a.m. workout is whipping my tail in a beautiful way. <laughs> it's waking up at 4 a.m. But we're going to get it together because we're going to keep doing it because we're, we're seeing wonderful benefits of it. So let's read our devotional and give y'all family members time to get on in here. Commanding Your Morning by Dr. Cindy Trim. Today's devotional for the 25th of January says, Speak no idle word, right? Um, our scripture today is coming from Matthew 12, 36, and it says, Every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. Ouch. Some of us might need to stop right there and just ask God to please forgive us for all of the idle words that we have spoken out of our mouth. Words that we have loosely said in conversations with others or even you know, conversations with ourselves. Sometimes we just speak stuff um, and we say things uh, that we shouldn't 
shouldn't be speaking and saying, right? <clears throat> so let's see how she breaks this apart. Too many people release careless words into the atmosphere and can't figure out why the life God has promised them isn't happening the way they had hoped it would. Facts. Scripture has revealed to us that everything in the universe has to adjust itself to accommodate our words. Whoa. Let me read that again. Scripture has revealed to us that everything in the universe has to adjust itself to accommodate our words. I, I just let that marinate for a minute. Sit with that for a minute. That's a Selah moment. Pause and think of that. Whenever you speak, whatever you speak, you are creating a world. Right? Thank you, Amanda. Love you, beautiful. You're creating a world, and what it's saying is. The universe, we're not talking about that, you know, that stuff people be praying to the universe. We're talking about the actual universe, the atmosphere, the spiritual world. It has to adjust itself to accommodate what you just spoke. Sit with that for a second. Now that'll preach. Jesus. Right? Whether good or bad, purposed or errant. That means you just out here speaking out of order. You you just loosely you, you using words and speaking things. You can look up Proverbs 13, 3, 18, 21, and Proverbs 21, 23 to uh, go further into uh, scripture concerning that, that thought she just shared with us. So words with no kingdom assignment will be brought into judgment. Baby, this devotional is loaded. Words with no kingdom assignment will be brought into judgment. Remember, our scripture for our devotional today is Matthew 12, 36. And we're talking about no speaking, no idle words. So it's basically saying every time you speak, you loosely use your mouth and you say something that you shouldn't be saying or you just carelessly talking. You're going to have to give an account of that. And it's saying, words with no kingdom assignment will be brought into judgment. You will be held accountable for every idle word. But you will also, let's flip that thing. You will also be rewarded for every faith-filled word. So, you get to choose what type of reward you're going to get. That is so good. That is so good. I never really thought of, I mean, I, I've thought about it, but I haven't thought about it in that way. Whenever you're speaking something good, you will receive a reward. You're going to get a reward for that. You're going to get something back, and it's going to manifest in your world. But when you're speaking something crazy, careless, loosely, um, that's why I don't like people to say, you know, um, like they'll say, um, I don't have no M-O-N-E-Y. Or they'll, you know, if they're not feeling well, they'll speak it into the atmosphere. Or they'll say, I'm so S-I-C-K of her. I don't even like to give the examples. I don't even like to give examples. They get on my N-E-R-V-E-S. You be like, stop doing that. That the question the question for you today is do you how do you how how are you using your mouth are you using your mouth purposely or carelessly how do you use your mouth what comes out of your mouth that's what we're talking about today thank you holy spirit because i had no idea <laughs> the, the whole morning i've been saying daddy what we're talking about today and it was pure that silence daddy what we're talking about today i don't know what we're talking about what we're talking about we're talking about these idle words the words that you're speaking are they thank you sean thank you baby girl are they purpose words or are they careless words let me tell you something just be honest with yourself can you truly say 
just looking over your life. As I look back over my life, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I got a testimony. Is your testimony that the words you've been speaking out of your mouth, they have created a beautiful world for you? Or are the words that you have spoken out of your mouth created this jacked up hot mess world that you complaining and murmuring about, but you the one spoke it? <laughs> baby, let's rock with it. It might be a little raw today, baby, I, but you'll be all right. Because somebody's got to talk to you about this, and it might as well be me. Somebody put in the chat, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to have this conversation, Jay. I'm ready to have this conversation. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Your mouth is producing results. And just because you don't see it right now. See, that's the this is this is the thing. This is why I do believe we are off the chain in certain areas. In many areas. We're off the chain because we live, we, we no longer live under the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law. What that means is, in the Old Testament, people used to get off the chain. They used to do stuff that God told them not to do. Dead. Boom. Baby, dead. Physically, dead. You out here sinning, thinking you winning, dead. You out here living your best life and doing what you want to do with the rest of your life, dead. But when Jesus came, Jesus fulfilled the law. He took away sin and the death. Okay, death of the grave. Because we all going to die, but some of us, even after death, we will live forever. Right? Even after death, we all will live forever. It's, you you going to determine where that is. Ooh. Baby, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word today. We thank you for this time with you. Holy Spirit, come on in the room. God, we invite your presence. We invite your power. We invite your anointing. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. We are listening. We need to hear from you. We want to hear from you. And we are in great expectation of what you're going to say. God, speak to us about our mouth. Speak to us about our mouth. The words that we say. Speak to us about how critical those words are in framing our world. And causing those things that be not as though they are. Help us to remember that when we speak, we are held accountable for what we say. That when we speak, things are changing for the good or for the bad. Help us to realize today that our words carry weight. They have power and they are working on our behalf, either to bring us up or to bring us, help us to be more resonant, help us to be more uh, cognizant, help us to be more mindful of the words that we speak, of what we're saying, not only to others, but to ourselves. Baby, I'm, it might get a little hot up in here today. It might get a little hot up in here today. You best get ready. You're going to have to put your big girl panties on. Look, listen, look at me. You are going to have to put your big girl panties on. Your big boy boxers on today. Whatever kind of drawers you wear. Baby. Thong, thong, thong. Baby, whatever. You better put some on today. Baby, go ahead and get your, tell your feelings. You got to go today. Because Jay getting ready to bring it. I can, can you feel that heat? <laughs> Baby, it's about to get hot up in here. Bite that mouth of yours. We're, gonna, we're talking about that mouth. What's coming out of it? Because you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's Bible. Somebody find that scripture for your sisters and brothers and, and drop it in the chat. Out of the abundance of the mouth, your heart is going to speak. What you saying, Jay? Your heart. We all, if you want to know how somebody feels, just shut your mouth and listen. You want to know how they feel? Just be quiet. Some of y'all talk so much. This is why God is telling us that you're going to be held accountable for these words that you speak. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let me speak only what you would have me to speak today. I pray that I would not hold back, that I would say exactly what you want us to hear today. Speak to me, through me, and then back to me so that I'll get this word for myself. That I won't just be speaking it and telling others, but that I'll receive it and apply it to my own life. To my own life. Listen to me. 
let, let me let me let me I'll read this prayer. Hopefully, y'all, somebody remind me to read the prayer at the end because I think we're gonna need it at the end. Listen to me. Our scripture is coming from Matthew 12, 36. Somebody can you put that in the chat? Matthew 12, 36. And it's talking about uh speaking no idle word. Every idle word that you speak. You're going to have to give an account for it in the day of judgment. That means when you go see Jesus, when, when he said TikTok, your time, and baby, I ain't talking about the tick or the talk, social media. I'm talking about TikTok, your clock is your clock is out. It's time for you to come on, come on and get this judgment so we can determine where you're going to live eternity. When you see Jesus, y'all going to have a conversation, baby. He's going to say, he's going to say, what did you, first of all, did you accept me as your Lord and Savior? It's going to be ding, ding, a bomb. Yes, I did. Okay, ding, ding. Did you live like it? <laughs> Baby, I done lost half, half, half of the viewers right there. Did you live like it, though? I know you confessed it out of your mouth. But does your life, did your life show proof of the fact that I lived on the inside of you? I, play with me today. Play with me today. I did not come here to play with you. Well, it ain't none of me. I'm just a vessel. And I don't, listen, I don't mind saying what he wanted, want me to say. Because let me tell you something. Whatever the Lord wants to say, you want to hear it. Because what he's doing is he's correcting you. Some of you, he's sending you a word of warning. Y'all use y'all mouth too loosely. Before we can even get on the mouth, we got to make sure that you listen. You know, I was. This is what I was thinking about today. Lord have mercy. It's a lot of. It's a lot of stuff going through my mind right now. Pray for me, because it's a lot of. Let me tell you something. When certain people jump on the line, it's a certain word that has to be spoken to that person. So I need you to explain something to you. It might seem like I'm jumping around. I'm not jumping around. I'm just hitting targets. Kind of like a gun. Boom, 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 boom. That's what I'm doing. So if it seems like I'm jumping around, and baby, if I hit you, the Holy Spirit didn't declare to miss you. You just got to say, ouch, and sit on down and just take it. You know how your mama used to tear that behind up? Your daddy possibly, mine wasn't there. But my mama used to tear my behind up. And honey, she, she, she have a hole on that one arm. And that other arm, she was using to tear that tail up. And I, ooh, ouch. And I'd be hollering and screaming. And honey, she'd be like, you can shut up all that hollering and screaming. Don't say a word. Now, that kind of used to make me mad. And I did that with my children. I want to apologize to them on um, publicly. I'm sorry. How are you going to whip me and then tell me to be quiet while you whipping me that's like anyway moving right along that's what god getting ready to do to us today i do believe we're getting ready to get that behind spanked in the spirit <laughs> baby it's a devil we about to get that behind spanked in the spirit Because you out here, you out here running your mouth and using your mouth any kind of way. But back to the people he told me to talk to first. Listen to me. While you out here, uh, Mr. Luke Warren, Mr. Luke Warren, <clears throat> one minute you with Jesus, then the next minute you doing something else. This is your warning. Since you done jumped on, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so glad you're here. But the Lord told me to tell you, you better choose a side. You better choose a side. You better be hot or you better be cold. All this him jumping in and out. Baby, it's kind of like your mama would say, stop running in and out of this in house. Let my air go out that door. And I'd be like, how the air go out the <laughs> Stop, Jacina. Do not laugh. This is not. Y'all think it is a joke. You kick in the cock on now, but you will not be kicking in the cock on on the day of judgment. See, he sends people like me. I'm, I'm over it. I used to be going to God all the time. God, I want to be, I want to be the, you know, <clears throat> the prophet. That I want to be the, you know, the evangelist that go out and tell people, you know, you know, God is good. He loves you. God is gonna take care of everything. You are gonna get a house and a car and a boo and baby, you gonna do you. You not getting none of that if you don't get that tail straight in the spirit. God, let me tell you something. He is not playing. I know you done been here for the last however long you been long. The Lord is coming. Well, he is. He coming. Soon. I was soon. We just don't know when that's going to be. You, those of you that's out here skipping and jumping. 
hipping and hopping, playing and laying, keep it up. Just keep it up. Because this is what's going to happen. I believe when we get to heaven, we hear all of the voices real, real quick. They go real fast. This is just my interpretation of what my thoughts are when we get to heaven. So mind your business. I believe when you get up in heaven, Jesus is going to do a, fit, a real fast DVD. You know, he's going to do like a real fast replay of your life. And you're going to hear them voices. All of them people that told you, get your life together. You need to give your life to the Lord. You're going to hear me, Jay Cena. Jay Cena, my listeners, you're going to hear my voice say, you better get it together. Because you're around here jumping around. And, and you, you know, one minute you're with the Lord. And the next minute you over here cussing people out. And that's the, your mouth. One minute you saying how much you love, oh I love, oh and baby y'all y'all use this love so loosely. I love you, I love you. But let somebody do one thing wrong and you ready to tear them down with that mouth. I know you don't want to, you don't want to talk back, but baby you ain't got to talk back today because I don't need no talk back. I'm gonna talk to you and you go, you can click off. But you done heard this word, you done heard a piece of this word. God is saying today, you better choose. You better choose. Because you're out here playing. You're going to have to give an account to the life that you lived or not. Some of y'all thinking, oh, I got fire insurance. Well, baby, it's just like car insurance. Are you paying that bill? Just because you got car insurance, if you're not paying that bill and you don't have no good insurance, when somebody hits you, you're going to be looking crazy because you're going to be saying, Oh, they can't fix my car. Yeah, cause you ain't got that real insurance. Some of y'all, y'all, some of y'all said yes to Jesus because oh, I heard that. It, some of y'all said yes to Jesus because you afraid to go to hell, but you didn't say yes to God because you're around here living like like you ain't gonna never see hell. Let me say that again for the people that's distracted. I said some of y'all around here. Then said, yes, Lord, I accept you in my life. You got up there and you was crying and doing all that kind of carrying on because the spirit was moving. <clears throat> and you done said, yes, Jesus, I accept you in my heart. And after that, you've been living your life like it, it ain't golden. It's raggedy. Living your life like it's raggedy. Out there just doing whatever you want, whenever you want, with whoever you want to do it with, how much you want to do it with them, wherever you want to do it, baby, and as long as you want to do it. Baby, I mean just getting it, getting it, getting it. And God said, you go on and enjoy yourself now, baby. Yeah, go on and enjoy it. Get it. Oh, baby, you out there lying and cussing and, and calling people all kind of names and sinning and thinking winning and just doing your thing. And I'm talking about you people, you lifestylers. I'm not talking about those of us that slip and fall every now and then. We come sliding down the slippery slopes every now and then. You know what I mean? Because you go to the theme park every now and then. You don't go to the theme park every day. Okay? I'm talking about those of you that be out here just doing your thing. I'm, t I'm telling you, I hear him so clear. One minute, you, I love the Lord. You go to church whenever. Some of y'all go to church and, and you ain't, listen. It ain't nothing in that. You're going out of formality and routine. Lord have mercy. I don't even know why I'm going down this road. But hey, baby, here we go. This is a dark road. You know how you go on them country roads? It's dark and there ain't no lights on there. The only lights you see is your car lights. And hopefully both of them working. This is what kind of message this is today. You out here playing. And he is not playing with you. You're going to be held accountable for the life that you lived or did not live. That's going to be the first thing. Did you accept him as your Lord and Savior? If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to repeat after me. Lord, I, I am a sinner and I am in need of a Savior. I have heard your word. I have heard of you and now I want to know you. I'm asking that you please forgive me for my sins, that you wash and cleanse me of all unrighteousness, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me. I want to live for you and with you forever. In Jesus' name, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you, you were raised from the dead. Now come into my heart. 
so that I can live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we got that out the way. Now you done said that. See, this is the this is the problem. This is this is what I feel like needs to happen more and more in the body of Christ. And this is why I get on here and I do what I do. I believe this is why God has called me to do this. Because we have to help each other in the body of Christ. I feel like when we get when we get saved, when we, you know, do what we just did, when we give our hearts to Jesus, now everybody on their own. Now you know I'm over here doing my thing, or she doing her thing, and everybody think they special over here doing their own thing. No, boo, you're supposed to be helping your sister or your brother keep this life, live their life the way that God has spoken in his word that they're supposed to live. You're supposed to be their encourager. You're supposed to be their accountability partner. You're supposed to be the one that holds them responsible to what they said, when they said it, whenever that was. I don't even know when I gave Jesus my life. I, I you know, I, I think it's wonderful people can say, oh, December 13, um, 2002, I gave it a lot. Well, I don't know when it was, but I know I gave it my life. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You have got to choose who you're going to serve. Because I'm telling you, this is what happens. We get saved, and we think that's it. That's it. That's it. That's all it is, too. I gave God my That's it. This is why you have people that, you know, oh, they say this a lot, especially on, on the dating site. You know, I'm on a couple dating sites because I'm out here trying to be found. Now I don't know where my husband is, and he might be on one of them sites, honey. I did read about somebody met a billionaire on there. Please, Lord, let it be me. Ow! Cut up. <laughs> Get right, J.C. Get yourself right. <laughs> Hold on. See, this is why you got to stay focused. Because you be doing too much. <laughs> I'm not playing. I'm not. Okay, get yourself together. Anyway, but I am serious, Lord. Because you can send me a millionaire right up on that black people meet, baby. And baby, we will meet at the altar. Anyway, stop it. Gotta make y'all laugh a little bit because y'all be like prunes. Getting back to you. You have got to understand that just because you said Jesus come into my heart does not mean that you invited God into your life. This, 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 this way we finna, we finna hang out here real quick. I know we're supposed to be talking about them words. We'll get to them words right now. You clickers that done clicked on here today, you, this word is for you. You're going to have to make up your mind who you are going to serve. Are you going to live your life for real? Because this is, this, is, this is what I see. When I go on the site, example, right? I go on the site. It'd be a lot of them. Maybe they'd be fine. They'd be looking good. And they'd be like, I'm spiritual. Delete. Click. Swipe. Swipe left. Uh -uh, we're not doing no spiritual. And if the truth be told, some of y'all is spiritual. Because you know what spiritual mean? I believe in God. This is why you got to be careful. They may not have even accepted him. I believe in God. But I haven't really allowed him to come into my life. See, there's a difference. Salvation is... I have accepted Jesus into my heart. Sanctification and transformation comes when you allow God to live in your, in your life. You allow him to live in you so that you can have the life and walk out the principles and, 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 and the word of God in your daily life. If you say you accepted Jesus, but you out here living any kind of way, I'm talking about on a regular. It's a scripture in the Bible that talk about it. It says those people that are sinning, you out here fornicating. I-N-G means a continual process. It means you're continuously doing it. It ain't talking about every now and then you slip up and fall. Because, baby, we all sin and come short of the glory of God. But at some point, the more, you, the more you spend time with God, the more you spend time in his word, you're not going to want to do the things of the world anymore. Because you're going to realize, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not supposed to be acting like them. I got a new name. I got, listen, I got a new name. They talking about your face look new. Your face ain't going to look new, baby. That face going to look just like it look if you 
Don't call the people that. If whatever you looking like when you go to that altar, that face gonna look the same way, baby. You is not about to have. You ain't about to drop no pounds at that altar. You is about to be looking the same way. Your hands gonna look the same. I know this. My, my hands look new and my feet do too. It's a lie, baby. It's a lie. You gonna look the same way that you was looking when you went up there to that altar. What happens is the newness come, it starts on the inside and then it spews on the outside. It is such an honor to me when somebody says to me, sis, you glowing. And I know that I have been spending time in the presence of God and I've been spending time reading my word and just, you know, go, going deeper in the thing. I, it is, it is such an honor. It blesses my entire soul when I hear someone say that to me, because I know the evidence of me connecting to the father is showing up. Some of y'all looking dark and dingy and don't do that, Jacina. Don't do that. Because I love them. You do love them. Yes, I do love them. I do. I'm not, I'm, I'm not concerned about your feelings, baby. I'm, I'm concerned about your soul. Nobody cares because you go to church all dressed up and you looking all good and everything. That's nice. What does your What does your heart look like, though? What What's going on on in, in that soul, that mind, that that will, the emotion? What's going on on the inside? Are you showing this spectacular life? This Oh, I love the Lord, and He heard my cry. God is a good God. Yes, He is. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. All right, thanks for my help. You out here saying all this and that, wearing the crosses, and look at my shirt. I mean, my shirt says, "I am a praying." Sling working woman. Hey, hey, because I am, honey, I'm all of that. But I also live like it. Now, there was a time when I wasn't living like it. Let's be clear. There was a time when I was out there doing whatever I wanted to do for the most part. Because I've always had a fear of God. But I would kind of get caught up. Y'all know how, y'all know about that caught up. God say go there. All right. You need a personal testimony. You need a personal example. Let me give you one. Y'all like to stay in my business, and it's fine because these are, this is not my business. This is a testimony. I remember I was uh, seeing this guy, seeing each other on, you know, just situationship because we're just whatever. Situationship for about two years, two and a half years, right? And, um, the individual clearly told me, you know, I don't want to, I don't want a relationship with you. I don't want to be in, no, I don't want to be in a relationship right now. Let me, let me get that right. I am not looking for a relationship right now, but he was, he was enjoying the benefits. I was, I was, I was giving wifely benefits away. If you're doing that, stop, stop giving away these husband benefits to these boyfriends, to these fiancés. Stop it. You gives them good benefits away, baby, when you become a wife, when you become a husband. No ringy, no dingy. No ringy, no poo nanny. I'm, I'm finna come for y'all because I'm, I'm not afraid. I ain't never afraid. I just be trying to hold back a little bit, but I'm not holding back today because I'm telling you, those of you that are on here, you need to hear it like an IS is, and baby, I'm that IS person. I knew who I was, but I, I wasn't acting like it. Very similar to what I'm talking to you all about this morning. You say I'm a Christian, but you don't act like it. I'm telling you, when you start getting closer to God, you're going to want to please him. It's just like the closer that I was getting to this individual guy, I wanted to please him. So I started giving him the best parts of me. <laughs> Isaiah is... <gasps> you will start the person that you oh that's good daddy the person that you spend the most time with you will want to give them the best parts of you 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 will do things you said you would never do you will go play baby you will do it you will do it stop sitting up there acting like I, I'm talking just about myself babe I'm talking to you Baby, Darlene, I was giving away cows. I was, 
honey, I was giving away the cow, the milk, the hay, the whatever, the grass, just whatever. If you want it, I got it. You show sure. us. And then one day I messed up and I got serious about my relationship with God. I had to meet up with this individual and, and later, after I got, after I healed, no, no, no. After I began to recognize that what he said was not going to change, no matter how much of this good punani I gave him, baby, best believe. Don't do it, Jay. Don't do it. How much of this punani I gave him, baby? Baby, you could, baby, you could sling it in that bedroom all you want. Living room, wherever you're trying to do it at, whatever, child. God bless your soul. Anyway, you could do all that you want. But if y'all ain't married, they by they ain't staying. More than likely, they're not staying. Why? Because you're just giving it to them. You're just giving it to them. They ain't got to work for it. They, they, oh, baby, who am I talking to today? They don't have to work for it. They don't have to do nothing because they know you're going to be there, number one, because you ain't out here in the street. So you're going to be there, and you're going to give it to them, and, you gonna, and you, it's going to be nice and fresh and ready and hot and all of that when they're ready for it. So that keeps coming back to you, even though they told you they don't want to be in no relationship. You know you do that to God all the time. You go to him for his good benefits. <laughs> Come for me. You 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 go to him for them good benefits all the time and you 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 look creeper. You you know, you just want him as a part-time lover. Lord, I'm going to come in here and I'm, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hang out with you. I'm going to love on you. I'm going to get intimate with you and then I'm going to leave and then I'm going to forget all about you for a couple of weeks, a couple of months and then I'll be back. And then you come running back. You know how they do, "Hey, what you doing?" That's how y'all be doing, God. "Hey, God. Hey, God." Especially when something pop off. "Hey, God, what you doing up there?" <laughs> God, what you doing? Oh, now you want to use your good words. God, I, you know, God, you know, I, I love you, Lord. You know, God, I, I repent. I'm, oh, now you want to repent, but you've been out here acting like a hellion. But now you want to repent. Oh, God. Oh, God. And God, and he's so loving. He be like, come on. Come on back. Come on. And you run up in there. He just love on you. And, uh, <clears throat> But that little one that you out there with, he don't treat you like that. Let me just give you a little snippet. The person that um, is sent by God, notice I said sent by God, they will emulate, imitate God in your life. Anybody, platonic all the way to romantic, church friend all the way to colleague. If they are sent by God, they will have uh, characteristics of the Father. You'll know them. By their love. You'll, you'll know who sent them. If they're coming to take, God ain't sent them. If they're coming to give, you better, you better pay attention. Out here, living, let's get back. You're living however you want to live, but then you want to say, I'm a Christian. No, no. You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You might be a Christian, but you're not a follower. Followers of Jesus Christ, they follow after him. They do what he said in his word. They look like him. You know how you've ever seen a married couple, they've been married so long, they start looking like each other? That's because they've been in fellowship. They've been intimate. They've been together so long, you like, y'all, y'all husband and wife? Yeah, we husband and wife. Like, oh, y'all look like brother and sister. That's good. Holy Spirit just said, when somebody tells you, when they tell you, they speak to you about a characteristic that God possesses, you know you spent time with the Lord. If people are not telling you that they see your growth in some shape or another, you might want to check that. Because I'm telling you, we got a lot of people out here, a lot of people that confess Jesus, but you're not, li you're not living like you know him. And you don't know him. Because you, you can't be a part-time lover 
and have a full-time relationship. It don't work. It just don't work. And, you know, I knew that my relationship with the Lord was different. And I knew that I had been healed when the, when the mister that I was seeing and I was giving all my goodies to, when the mister <clears throat> called and said, hey, I want to see you. And I said, okay, no problem. I said, there would be no sex and there would be no spending the night. You're going to have to leave by this time. There will be no touching, no kiss. Baby, I laid them rules down. It, was, it won't be none of this. Another one I had to, I, yes, yes, we can see each other. Absolutely. You can meet me here. Meet me at Bahama Breeze. Meet me at Longhorns. And then I am prepared to pay for my own food. Because when I was giving up them goodies, you paying for it. You paying for all of this. <laughs> Listen, I'm not playing with y'all. But when I begin to fellowship more with God, when I begin to take my relationship with God seriously, I begin to realize who I am, my value, what I carry, and that I can't just give no anybody access to me. This is why I, I don't have a lot of <clears throat> I don't have a lot of friends. I've never had a lot of friends. Got tons of acquaintances, tons. But I don't have a lot of friends. And even those people that I had in my circles, my circles have gotten smaller. And the reasons my circle has gotten smaller is because, number one, if we're not communing, if we're not talking, you know, there are some friends that I have, we don't talk all the time. But when we talk, we talk heart to heart. I'm just in a place in my life where if I don't see no growth in your life, if, if, if I don't see that we're moving in the same direction, boo, you got to go. You, 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 you don't have to be out of my life. You just can't have certain access to me. I am not letting you get close to me. Uh -uh. Some of you, we don't, we, we, we don't look at enough people to, to look at the fruit because the, the fruit on that tree is going to tell you who really is who. One of them just logged on. One of them friends that I was just talking about. We've been friends over 30 years. When we see each other, when we talk, it's like we talked yesterday. We tight, tight, close, close. But then there are other friends that are right now, they, they are in my immediate circle. I need to connect with them more because they're closer, whatever the case may be. But they are in my circle right now because they are, they are, our relationship causes me to grow. It challenges me to be better. I got one that we, we close as business partners. I got one, you know, we besties. We, we, we close as singles. I got enough, like, who are the people in your life? Because I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> going right on back to this right here. Let me tell you something. The people in your circle will either cause you to draw closer to God or away from God. If that man you sin, if that woman that you sin, if they're not drawing you closer to God, God ain't send them. If y'all doing stuff that you're not supposed to be doing, God didn't send them. Because the one that God sends, they're going to have a heart to do things God's way. What's your heart? What's your heart like? We started off the conversation talking about your mouth, how you loosely use words out of your mouth. I don't care nothing about them. You know what? They, what whatever. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Stop using words loosely out of your mouth because you're framing your world. That stuff is coming to pass in your life. Some of you eating what you spoke. And now you mad and, and complaining and, and upset with God because you, you getting what you put out there. No. Nah. <clears throat> Some of you, you know, you, you want God to bless your marriage, you want God to bless your family, you want God to bless your business, but you're lazy, you're undisciplined. You start something and you don't finish it. You get hyped when things are good, but when things are not good, you lose your motivation. I asked one of my students that yesterday, I said, why aren't you doing your work? 
He said, I don't have no motivation to do it. Well, okay then. Well, you don't have no motivation. There ain't no need of me um, over here breaking my, you know, trying to help you. See how I caught that? You see how I caught that? Even if I start to say something that I know that I shouldn't be putting out it. Baby, I have trained myself to watch my words so much that I'll catch it and I'll stop it in midair and replace it. This is what I want to. This is what I want to say to you. When are you going to get real about your walk with God? Straight up. If you out here lukewarm like this coffee, this coffee is lukewarm now, and I don't even really want it. I gotta wait, and I gotta warm it up. I gotta make it hot. Why? Because it's meant to be. You know, I mean, of course we have the iced coffee. That's different, but you know what I'm saying. Don't 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 be smart. You always got to be the smart one in the class. This is supposed to be hot. It's enjoyable when it's hot. And God is saying today, you need to choose. You can be hot or cold. Because you're walking around here telling people, you know, I love Jesus and, and Jesus this and Jesus that. And then you got nerve to be posting on, on your Facebook about Jesus. And then the next post, you talk, you, you're talking out the side of your neck and then posting something crazy. Let me tell you something. This stuff follows you. This stuff that you put on social media, it follows you your whole life. It follows you. People can look this stuff up when they hire you for a job, and they can see what, you, what you're putting out there, and they can say, I, we don't want them to be part of our organization. And I believe God, God is looking at us saying, they say with their mouth. This is why he said, some of you are going to get up there and you're going to think that you got fire insurance. And you're going to get up there in heaven and God is going to say, they're going to be like, God, here's another one. Like, just line them up. They're going to be coming, moving, moving. And then you're going to get in front of them. You're going to be like, hey, God, they're going to be like, yeah, I know your voice and everything, but um, who are you? Peter, who that again? Child, that ain't nobody but Sherilyn. I could be like, I know Sherilyn. I was knocking on Sherilyn's heart for years and years and years. She accepted Jesus, and Jesus gonna stand up and be like, Dad, yes, yeah, she did. Yes, yeah, she did accept you into her heart, but she never accepted me into her life. Yeah, I, I, I know he. I know, and you know. In, in 1995, he, he, he accepted you into his, into his heart, son. I know it. Because I chased him for a long time. Some of them was crackheads. Some of them was alcoholics. Some of them was hoes. Some of them was lies and stealers and dead murderers. And you think, I ain't murdered nobody with your mouth. Yeah, you done killed a whole lot of people. Boom, baby, I came for you. Come, please come for me. You done murder people with your mouth. Then said something about people. Some of your children, you done murdered them with your mouth. You done said stuff loosely out of your mouth. And you wonder why your child ain't got no confidence. You wonder why they looking all looking all sad and gloomy. Because of your mouth. That spouse of yours ain't want nothing to do with you. And you mad. He don't want to do this or she don't want to do that. Well, I wonder what that mouth has been saying. I wonder what that, that lifestyle been like. Because the Bible says, you married ladies, let me tell you this right here. The Bible says that you will win him over, not by that mouth. The Proverbs tell you about what's going on with that mouth. That man said, listen, I'd rather sleep on the rooftop of this here house. On a tin roof. You know a tin roof is hotter than a jalapeno pepper, baby. That thing is hotter than them, what, them, um, them um, three Hebrew boys went up in that fire, that tin roof. That man said, I'd rather sleep up there on the tin roof than to be in here with this here nagging behind woman. Always arguing, murmuring, and complaining. Just always got something to say. God said, that ain't how you're going to win him over, sis. You're going to win him over by your lifestyle. Sir, let me jump on you since you want to be like, yeah, that's right. Sir, your prayer's not even answered unless you treat her right. God ain't playing by baby girl. Both of y'all got to get it together. You both will see God manifested in your life and in your marriage when you both get in line. Sir, you wonder why your why your prayers ain't been answered? If you marry, it's how you treating your wife. And you'll know how you're treating her by that, her countenance. Her countenance will tell, a woman's countenance tells everything. She could walk up in the party. She could walk up in church and be like, I'm fine. But she could be looking, baby, she ain't fine. She mad and she trying to hold back. 
What is your lifestyle? Prayers are not being answered because your lifestyle is raggedy. You are a hot mess. But you going to church. How? How are you going to church every Sunday? And then God bless you if you're going to Bible study. You're going to Bible study during the week. You're going to church on Sunday. But you're still acting in the kind of way you want to after church on Sunday. All the way up until church on Sunday. When you leave the church. You acting like you. But you posting like. You love the Lord. One minute and then the next minute. I'm going to tell you who will tell you if you're really living a Christ-like life. You're living a Christ-like life when your family, those that you immediately live with, your immediate family, those that you live in the house with, if they're able to say yes, because see, they see most of what you're doing. We see a portion of you. So, of course, when you... You know, you type up your little stuff. You like, yes, yes. You know, I love the Lord. You throwing your scriptures up there from you version and everything. You know, you and everybody liking your post. You like, yeah, y'all see, I'm a Christian. <laughs> uh, uh. What is that lifestyle saying though? You will, you will choose Christ when He's first in your life. The more of him you get, the more of him you're going to want to get. Just like any other I'm telling y'all, it's just like any other relationship. Just think about that one person that you spend so much time with. You enjoy spending time with them. You want to give to them all the time. You make time for them. You will move your schedule out of the way to be with that person. God said, but you won't do that for me. You will not shift your schedule for me. This morning, I told y'all last week, I started waking up last week, 4 o'clock, last Wednesday, at 4 a.m. to do my workouts so that I could be refreshed when I go in, in, into the presence of God and I spend time with God in the mornings. Because when I come home in the evening, I'm tired. I'm tired. So I try to spend time with him in the morning and then little, I have little moments throughout my day where I can spend time with him. And this morning, the alarm clock went off because I didn't get to bed late. I did a class. My sister had a class. I did the class. It was, it was amazing. And I didn't get my dinner and all of that until after the class. So I was running late. I need to be in the bed between 8 and 9 in order to wake up and, and able to feel refreshed at 4. Well, I didn't get to bed till like almost 10. That alarm clock went off this morning. I was like, oh, my Lord. I hit that snooze button and I could feel the Holy Spirit like he was like, like, it, it, it almost seemed like he was saying, Jay, come on, no, get up. And I was like, I immediately said out of my, Lord, I need you to help me. I want to be disciplined. I want to be committed, not just with my mouth, but with my life. I want to commit and I want to be consistent and disciplined when it comes to you and what you are showing me that I need to do for my life. Y'all, when I said that, it was like a little, like a little, look, little push. And I said, okay, okay, you see you up, you sitting up now. Come on, let's go. Got on up, went in there, brushed my teeth, washed my face. Went in there, got my workout clothes, and then I found me. I said, I don't need nothing else today. I need some gospel workout. Had me uh, three little gospel workouts in there, baby. I was getting it. And then as I was working out, I was praising God. As I was working out, I was praying. And and whew, the song by Kurt Franklin came on as, as, you know, the cool down part of the workout. And it was called, It's Over Now. I feel like I can make it. The storm is over now. And I don't know what happened, but I, I just broke into tears. Like, I began to worship the Lord. And I said, God, I thank you that I have not only a mind to know you, to live for you, but I have a heart to do it. Like, I want to do it. 
I remember in the past, I would have made a million and one excuse. I can't get up at no four o'clock in the morning. That's too early. God know my heart. He, he know I ain't no morning person. And it's like God was saying, God was saying to me at the beginning of 2023, he was saying, Jacina, what I'm doing in your life this year is going to require you to sacrifice a little bit more. You can't keep doing what you've been doing and expecting the Ephesians 3.20 that I'm about to drop in your life. You're going to have to sacrifice a little more. You're going to have to do it a little more. You're going to have to go higher. The level that I'm getting ready to take you, your prayer time, your prayer life, is going. It's going to be. it's going to be more sacrificial. Listen, you cannot keep asking God for more, but you're not giving him any anymore. You cannot keep asking him to bless you indeed, but you ain't giving him nothing to bless. You cannot keep saying, oh Lord, I love you. I love you. And going to church and holding your Bible and doing all this kind of stuff. But while they're preaching, you on Facebook, you on Instagram, you ain't doing, you, listen, you're not doing anything he said in the good book because you so, you, because you trying to live your best life. Baby, you, you got at the end of your life, you're going to have to give an account for the life that you lived or did not live. And I'm telling you, you are not going to be happy because you're going to look and God's going to say, mm -mm, mm -mm, I, I don't know him. I don't know her. Mm -mm, depart from me. I don't even know you. And you're going to be like, but God, I went to church. But God, I read the Bible. But God, I told people about you. But God, I, I prayed with my children. He's going to say, but I didn't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you, daughter. I don't know you, son. You chose everything over me. Yep, you did your little sprinkles of this and that for me. For me. But you didn't get to know me. That's what we miss in that church. At church, we're missing that sanctification and transformation message. In order for your life to be changed, you're going to have to be sanctified. That means you're going to have to make him a priority. And I know you hear this, and I know you say I'm going to do it. But listen, y'all, how bad do you really want it? How bad do you really want it? God told me, J.C., you're getting ready to be trapped. You're getting ready to be doing things, and you're going to have to be an optimal help. So I need you to make health your priority. I need you drinking more water. I need you being more mindful about what you eat. I don't eat crazy, but he was saying, I need you to add more fruits and vegetables to your diet. So I went and got me an air fryer. I, I don't even know when last time I turned my stove on. I begin to not just hear him, but I begin to listen to him to where I begin to apply that which I have heard. You are not going to see God move in your life. You Listen, you're going to be praying for prayers and nothing is going to be happening if there is no application of the word of God in your life. You, you, you ought to be sick of reading the word, but not living it. God says, don't be just a hearer only. You got to do what I'm telling you to do. Do you want to wake up on judgment day and God say to you, I don't, I don't know you. You're part from me. You was down there using your mouth loosely, saying all kind of stuff to your spouse, to your children. Some of you need to go and repent after this life. You need to repent. Ask God to forgive you for the words that you spoke and the life that you've been living. Then you need to go to those people that you that he showed and ask him, who do I need to go and ask for forgiveness for concerning the words that I said and the, and the way that I lived before them? Some of you wonder why your children are doing certain things, why you're seeing certain behaviors. Well, what kind of life have you been living before them? They're only going to emulate their own. Listen, they're going to do what you're supposed to be doing concerning your father. They're gonna. It was an old saying that you say, "Don't, don't um. What is it? Don't say what I say, but do it. Don't do what I. Say. Basically, do what I say. What it, I don't want you. Don't look at. Just do what I say. What is the saying? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't say what I say. Do it. Mm -mm. Basically, you're saying just do what I tell you to do. No, what they're gonna do is they're gonna do what they see. What do they see you doing? 
Do they see you up praising the Lord and doing your little confessions and everything, but then they turn around and, and now they see you cussing and, and you thugging out, you know, on the on on the radio, you know, you playing all this and that. Do what I say, not as I do. Yes. Hey, that's a mess. That's that's a mess. You done raised up with that. We got to go and ask God. My sister taught me that last night. There are some things that you have learned. There are some things that, that, that have been spoken over your life. There are some things that you have experienced over your life. And they are out of line with the word of God. What the word of God says about you. What the word of God says you should be doing. You have got to go back and ask God. Show me God those areas in my life that are out of order. That are not lined up according to your world and your kingdom. And help me to get them right. I need to renounce every last one of them. Tear them down. I'm telling you, you some yep, you, the way you talk to your kids. I know. I did it. I ain't telling y'all nothing. Trying to, well, she coming for me by my kids. Better, I'm coming for us. Cause I did it with mine. I had to go to my kids and say, I apologize. Please forgive me. I kept using the excuse of, well, that's just how I was raised. That's, you know, my mama, that's how she was with me. So, no ma'am. You are going to be held accountable for your words and you're going to be held, held accountable for your lifestyle. You grown now. It ain't no more, well, my mama, that's how my mama did me. Well, my daddy, well, that's just how I did. That's just how I am. No, no, you out of order. That is immature and you are not ready. You ain't ready to be healed. You ain't ready to grow. You're not, you're not ready to go into the levels and the things of God that he has for you. Because your mindset is jacked up. It's, it's jacked up. The Bible tells us do not be conformed to this world. That means you are not to act and behave like this world. But you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God is, listen, the more time you spend with him and in his word, he's going to renew your mind. This is why you got to hang around the right kind of people. Listen, I don't care if you've known them people for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. If they are not moving you towards Christ, baby, you got you to gotta, you gotta diminish your access. You don't have to cut them off. Just diminish your access. Less and less access. I'm very careful about who I get on the phone with now. I may respond to your text, but I might not answer that phone. I literally be like, God, do I answer that? Like, seriously, do I answer that? I almost want you to text me first and tell me, hey, Jay, I want to call you about such and such. We almost need like a precursor before you could get through on the phone. I need you to tell me why you called. I guard my spirit and my heart now. If you're calling me and, and you know, first of all, you ain't even gave me a heads up. Hey, sis, you know, I'm really going through something. Do you have some time? Do you have about five minutes so that I can um, um, share something with you? You know, I, I was led to you um, to, to, to release this. Get people a heads up. Stop calling people and getting on the phone. You done dumped all that on. You don't know what people got going on. You don't know what. And did God lead you to them? Did God tell you to call them? Because some of y'all just picks up the phone and call people and you hash out all your stuff. Be like, well, what is you calling me for? Because I can't help you. You're doing that because you don't. your relationship with God is not in order. Because God, there'll be some time God will say, do not call nobody. Sit right here and talk to me. Then there are other times he'll say, call so-and-so. And we'll be prepared for that call. I'm telling you, I am not playing about my relationship with God. I'm not doing it. I can't keep running to other people when God wants to be that person or that in my life. I believe that's what God is doing in this season. He's saying, you're going to stop running to other people because they're not going to be available. You need to run to me. All he's doing is he's saying, I'm trying to get you right. I am trying to get you right. But you keep running in every other direction but me. You're looking for love. You're running in the bed. But I'm the only one that can love you the way you need to be loved. You won't keep running in that bed because you'll realize, you know what? This is not right. This is not God. And this person don't really love They say, I love you. Use a lie because if you love me, you will cover me like the Bible said. You ain't trying to cover me. You're trying to get up under the covers with me. You've been sent by the devil. You And, and you're a distraction. Pay attention. No, but your flesh. Your flesh. 
Maybe I have to tell God. You don't have to do something. My sister said something last night and challenged me, Jesus. And God reminded me again today during my prayer time. And I got to do it tonight. He challenged, she said, some of y'all need to take care of some stuff in your life that you know that in your single life, you've been using, basically, you've been using this as a substitute. I knew she was talking to me. God said, you got to let it go. Smart people can read between the lines. Those of you that, anyway. I said, God, I don't want nothing coming between us. I want to be a prepared bride. I want to be a ready bride. I am dealing with this flesh. I am working on drawing closer to God. I am not perfect. I mess up. But what I don't do is I don't stay messed up. I get my butt up. I go to God and I let it out. God, I want that. I remember I went to God once. I was like, I want it. I do. I want it. You got to help me today. I want to. God, you know, I just love it. Look, I love you, but I want this right here. I'm tired of being by myself. God, you done given me this. And I don't be saying, God, take it away. I be saying, God, until I get married, simmer this thing on down to help me to live right. Because I want to please you with my life, but now, nah, I'm 50. And you know, when a woman get in her 50s, baby, prime of my life, where is my husband? I don't be going to God and be like, oh, God, take it away. No, I don't want you to take nothing away. I want you to simmer it down so it could be ready, hot, and on fire when my husband come. No taking nothing away. Watch your words. Oh, I don't know where this just came from. The Holy Spirit saying, stop using divorce in your marriage. Don't say it no more. Don't even say, I'm leaving. You're out of order. And what you have called, you, you just called division in your house. You said division, come on in. When you when you in a relationship and you say, I'm leaving. Or I'm, I'm going to get divorced. I want to divorce. You just loosely. What you said is division, come on in. Strife, come on in. Pain, come on in. You inviting in. <sighs> Y'all think this is a joke. This is not no joke. You invite things in when you use your words loosely. When you do not live for God. When you say that he is your Lord. He ain't your Lord. He just, he really is just your God. He's your, he's your Savior. He saved you from your sin, but he ain't Lord enough to keep you from, from not sinning. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. This is, the, this is the prayer today. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accepted, acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I will let no corrupt communication proceed out of my mouth, but only that which is edifying. I decree and declare a prophetic upgrading of my speech, my thought life, and my lifestyle. I cancel the effect of negative self-defeating words and thought processes, and I put them under my feet. I declare new cycles of victory, success, and prosperity. We replace old cycles of failure, poverty, and death in my life. God, we pray this morning that you would help us to live for you and to live like Jesus did. God, we want to be serious about our walk with you. We want to be serious. We want to be disciplined in our walk with you. We cannot keep making excuses. And even though you are a gracious, loving, forgiving God, there will come a time where you'll say, enough is enough. We don't want to take your, your grace for granted. We don't want to take your mercy for granted. We don't want to take your faithfulness and your unconditional love for granted. And we repent for the times that we have. We know we're not perfect. We know we'll be tempted and challenged in the future to allow our flesh to dictate our actions. At that moment, help us. Help us to live for you and to live righteously. We don't want to just be out here saying we, we love the Lord. but We want to live like it. 
we're tired. We're tired of being two-faced and double-minded, saying one thing but living a whole nother way. God expose, reveal, and remove anyone or anything that's in our life that's that's not drawing us closer to you. That's not uh, that does not have kingdom assignment. That's not purpose to be in our life. Move them. Move them out of our way. If we can't do it, if we can't do God, we're asking you to do it. Just shut it down. And heal those areas where it hurts. Because for some of us, it's going to cause great pain. Because it has become an idol. It has become something that we have held on to and replaced you with. Forgive us today. We want to be more like you. We really do. But we cannot do it by ourselves. So, Holy Spirit, we invite you into our life today that we will make better decisions concerning our walk with you. Help us to be more disciplined in our walk. We want to be a light. We want to be a light that shines in a dark place. Not like the Pharisees that get out there and just say stuff about Jesus. But we want to be that daughter. We want to be that son that pleases you with our life. And we know it may take some time. But God, we know that you are patient with us. And we are grateful. Forgive us for the things that we have done to hurt you. Forgive us for our sins. Those things that we have committed by word, action, or deed. Forgive us. God, help us to turn. Some of this stuff is hard for us to turn away from. We've been doing it for so long. We've let our flesh rule and dictate our actions for so long that now we want to turn. It's like, how? Like, some of us will make a decision and then we'll find ourselves doing the very thing that we prayed to stop doing. Paul said, the thing that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. I find myself right back. God, I pray in that moment that we won't forget that your grace is sufficient for us. That even though we have fallen, we can get back up. We don't have to stay there. We don't run to something else, but we run to you. Because you're going to be there every time. You're looking at the heart. You're looking at the heart. And the more we run to you, the more we'll get it together. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. And we give you praise today. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I love you guys. Have an amazing day. I hope you sit with this word. I just feel like I need to stop and go into worship and just... <sighs> Glory to God. God, help us not to live a lie. We can fool the world, but we cannot fool you. Oh, God, we pray for charity. God, we pray for charity. Jesus, have mercy, God. <laughs> have mercy, God. Stay on that mother. Amen. I love you guys. May the Lord bless you and keep you. He loves you so much. He just wants us to get it right. He knows you're not perfect. You got to have a heart to get it right. Okay? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. May he be gracious to you and lift up his countenance towards you. I pray that God will cover, keep, and protect you, you and your family. 
And I pray that you would not just be a hearer of what has been spoken today, but you will be a doer, that you will seek intimacy with God so that your life can be transformed and changed. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. I'll see you on Friday, okay? Have a good day.